Hey guys, this is Michael Tarala with Click. This is the second part of the introduction to set analysis. Uh, basically, I figured let me just create a quick informal type video to kind of show you some of the really cool things you can do with set analysis. Remember, the first video was really more of an introduction to understand and describe the expression structure, and now we can take this to the next level and do the following things. So let me just switch over to uh, the notepad where I just took some notes of things I wanted to show you. So for example, um, checking the different types of conditions that are available in set analysis, such as utilizing literals or hard-coded lists, uh, using searches with wildcards and comparison operators, uh, also uh, allowing you to utilize uh, not equal, for example. Uh, also using variables that are available. Uh, within the script and how they would be defined and then also using something called dollar expansion uh, which allows you to utilize a function or a method or another expression to uh, evaluate a value to be compared within the set analysis expression. I'm going to provide a sample QVF. Uh, the QVF is the application. It'll be attached to the document uh, that this video is embedded in um, and I'll also put these uh, expression strings uh, available in the post as well. So I encourage you to stay on for the next few minutes just to see how these work in action. So I'm recording at 1280 by 720 so we could have a uh, actually a, a larger screen displayed in a smaller resolution uh, for the video. So feel free to zoom in or full screen this if you need to. So I already have the data loaded. Uh, I'm just going to go into view mode and just show you uh, a couple of these examples. So this example will have a default chart that is summarizing sales uh, by either year or by product category. Um, and it'll have a variety of different set analysis expressions defined for the measures. So for example, the first one, default sum of sales. If I utilize the category filter pane and I just select babyware, for example, you can see it updates with babyware. Okay, that is the default associative uh, data experience that we provide uh, when we load data into the indexed engine. But you'll notice the other ones or some of the other ones haven't changed. Uh, and those are because those particular um, measures are locked into a particular category within the set analysis expression, such as uh, category name is equal to close and babyware and I what I did is I put the expression in the title so you can see the the differences and keep in mind when utilizing uh, the dollar sign when you define the expression the dollar sign means to include uh, selections meaning if I am going to be selecting on a uh, another dimension so if I select a product name by expanding this particular filter pane you're going to notice these will update accordingly so if I just select let's say uh, baby dark lounge suit and take that selection you can see this chart is updated appropriately because it's taking other selections into account within the expression okay all right so let's go into uh, a little bit of each of these and see how we define these okay so the first thing I'd like to show you is let's just uh, create a new sheet so what I'm going to do is go into the sheet selector create a new sheet okay now we have our empty sheet and I'm just gonna go to my charts and we'll grab a bar chart. Okay, and what we're going to do is just start off simply with category name and we're going to add the measure of sales. Okay, and that's the default sum of sales as we mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's say I want to provide a search. I want to look for all categories that contain uh, the string close. So what I can do is go into my expression and what I'm going to do is actually go into the notepad so you can see it a little bit larger. Okay, and by default, I can type in this expression here. And the way I type these expressions, it, once you start learning this, it, it becomes really simple. You start out with your expression such as sum of sales, and then you move over and then you start putting the markers for set analysis, which is two brackets. Then you choose whether you want to include or not include all selections, in this case by default, the dollar sign. Then you put the two um, left and right uh, angle brackets, which are your modifiers, and then you put in the field name that you want to uh, test the condition on. So in this case, category name. And then what you want it to equal to. And then you use curly brackets and then single quotes if it's a literal, for example, or an exact, uh, an exact match, 
or you can use uh, double quotes if it's a search. So in this case, I'm going to do a search and uh, I might have stated in the first video about the single and double quotes. Right now, the way they work is uh, it's either single or double quotes do the same thing. They will accept a, a literal or a search, but that is a bug that is going to be fixed. Uh, and in an up and coming blog post by our resident blogger, uh, Hick, H-I-C, as, as he's well known by his abbreviation, um, he basically is going to explain um, what to look out for in that. So keep an eye out for that in our uh, design blog in the community. Um, so by defining a search here, what I'm going to do is put an asterisk and then just type in the word close. Okay, and what that will do is basically give me everything before and then the word close it's going to search for. So I'm just going to copy that expression. Actually, I'll cut it out because we don't really need it. And I'll go back to desktop and I'm going to go to my uh, measure. And I'm just going to paste that right in. Okay. And you can see here, you could also check the evaluation of the syntax by looking at this uh, information icon on the bottom. So by clicking apply, you're now going to see we're just limited to bath clothes and men's clothes. Okay. So that's an example of uh, doing a, a search with a, a wild card. Okay, so let's go back into the expression. Let's say I want everything that is not equal, that basically give me everything um, that does not contain uh, this ex search expression for close. And I can do that by simply putting um, a minus symbol. And if you look here, uh, one of the examples, I put the minus symbol right before the equal sign. So that's basically saying not equal to. And then when I click apply here, you're going to see it's going to give me everything that does not, uh, everything that does not include the word close. Okay, so that's a nice example of doing not equal. Okay, so let's add a, another dimension uh, to this. So let's look at, uh, let's say, country as well. And we're going to do this just basically for comparison purposes when we want to add another condition. So I'm going to add country. And then we're going to go to appearance. And we're going to make this a stacked chart. Okay, and uh, let's change the data around here. Let's take country and put that across the bottom. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, notepad. Okay, so what we just covered here, we're showing you how to do a search with the wildcard, as well as showing you how to do uh, the not equal. Uh, you've already seen an example of doing the literal uh, with the single quotes um, uh, in another example, but just to do it clearly here, utilizing single quotes, I'm gonna go back into the measure. Okay, and that is the preferred or best practice method to basically do a uh, exact uh, match. Let's go to appearance and let's turn on the legend. Okay, and then you can see here with the legend, only bath clothes is selected for my metric. Okay, so that is utilizing the single quotes. Okay, now let's say we want to look at uh, one for a particular uh, a year or, um, or, or a range within the year. Okay, so what we're going to do here is let's take this chart and I'm going to do control C and control V and basically just copy it. And then I'm going to take my uh, year value, drop that right on here and let's uh, replace category name. Okay, so now all the colors uh, basically represent um, the years. Okay, so we have 2013, 2014, and 2015. Okay, so let's go back to our notepad and let's take that set analysis expression, go to our metrics, paste it in, and now we're looking at where year is only 2013. Very simple. Now with years, uh, you don't have to use uh, the single quotes. And then I could really do a comma and add like a, a string list. So here's 2014 and so forth. Now if I wanted to say, let me see everything that is uh, greater than 2013, I have to wrap it in quotes because it is a search. And then I would utilize a greater than symbol and click apply. And now we have 2014 and 2015. Okay, so that gives you an example of how to do um, some using some of the comparison operators within the search. Okay, 
A um, couple other examples here. Uh, let's look at how to use some variables. Okay, so if you're familiar with variables, uh, what you must do is set them within the script. So I already have the script set here in the data load editor. And here we're using v, which is a best practice when defining variables, low case v, default cat equals single quote uh, baby wear single quote. So we load that data and that variable is now defined. And then what we can do is just going back here is you define where you would put, you define the variable basically um, where you would put the um, uh, modifier expression with the uh, the literal or the search. So here I have where category name equals v uh, dollar parentheses v default category. Basically this is how you represent a variable. I'll probably do another video on variables a little bit later but when utilizing variables within the expressions you represent them with the dollar sign parentheses the name of the variable close parentheses. Okay and then I click apply and then that being stated, so now we're looking at the all of the years and then going back to category name, we're just going to replace the year. And now you can see again, we're looking at baby wear. So if I went back into the variable and I made this sport wear and I reload and we go back and now you can see we're looking at sport wear. Okay, that's another great example of trying to set a, like a default value uh, as well within the script. Okay, um, so now a very, very cool and an exciting thing that I also like to uh, talk about is uh, use of what's called dollar expansion. Okay, and the reason for dollar expansion is because of the set analysis parser to understand how it can evaluate certain sections of uh, that expression. Okay, um, so let's say that I want to use a function to evaluate a, a particular uh, field or a year or whatever. So what example that I took here, let's go back and what we're going to do is we're going to use a, um, a KPI object and you use the sum of sales. Okay, and that's all of the years in the database. Okay, once again, utilizing the capability I showed you, right, sum sales, I'm just typing in just to kind of show you the structure I use. Uh, then I use the uh, curly braces, then I put the dollar sign in, then I put the modifier in, and then I put in the field I'm looking at. In this case, it's going to be uh, year equals, and then two curly braces, and then 2015. So let's say this is the current year sales. Okay, 289, so keep that in mind. So let's say we want this to update automatically with the uh, changing of the dates, the changing of the years, the months, the, the quarters, the weeks, etc. So what you would do is where you have your curly braces, um, you would think that you would put the functions in there directly, but how you do this is by, first of all, you have a double quote to uh, designate the, the search, and you think you would put in, for example, um, I want to look at the year, which is a year function, of today, which is today's date, for example. Okay, those two functions together are not going to work. If I click apply, you're going to see the number goes down to zero. So if I go back into edit mode, the way we allow this function to be evaluated for the comparison is by using what we call dollar expansion, which is a dollar sign, parentheses, and equal. Then you define your function and then just close the parentheses. And then by doing so, you can see that it evaluated to 2015 or 2015 and then the value 289 is uh, present within the KPI. Okay, so that is a, a great way of uh, allowing you to utilize uh, all of the chart functions that are available within the Click products and uh, use them to basically define new values that you might want to use within your comparison. All right, so this video is a little bit longer than I planned on it being, but there is a lot of great useful information in here. Please note, guys, I love doing this stuff. I love working uh, in the community with you. So please leave your comments or questions, uh, even suggestions uh, for other videos you'd like to see. And I can turn these around very, very quickly and, and have you becoming an expert in no time. All guys. Take care. Thanks for your time.